Well, how about we just get this over with first? Yeah, this is kind of precarious, eh? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, oh, you're locking. Yeah, I pop and locking. Don't uh, pop and lock. Today, come on down. I'm coming. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about the white monkey jobs. White monkey jobs? I ain't no monkey. <laughs> Who are you calling a monkey? Yeah, I know, that's incredibly racist, but because we're white, it's not a problem. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> you and I both know that I'd say 90% of all the jobs that foreigners get here in China are English teaching, or at least language-related jobs, right? True that. But there are certain things that foreigners do on the side, and I'm going to add illegally, because you're not supposed to do any work other than for the company you've got your work visa for. Um, but there are things that people do on the side in order to make quick money, and uh, we call them the white monkey jobs. So, Zemo, maybe you can explain sort of what kind of things people do. Yeah, first I want to say it's called a white monkey job because monkeys imply that there's not much intelligence. Nice air. Um, imply that there's much, not much intelligence, and the only reason you're getting the job is because you're white, and that's actually the truth. That's the truth here. And the most common white monkey job that I see is uh, are people getting like really low-level commercial gigs. So they'll be in a little advertisement pretending to be a businessman or a doctor or something like this. And also being a foreign DJ. I see this everywhere. Every club has a DJ, usually from Russia, sitting there pretending like they're actually mixing music when they're actually just, you know, doing nothing. Sure. Getting paid to be white. And I, that's, I, I'd say that's the most, the most common one. Um, and one more I'll add is the uh, the uh, fake... Actually, you know what? I'm going to let you talk about that because you've actually done it. Okay. Why don't you Which go one? into it? Which one are you talking about? Here, you, the, uh... I, I believe you are like a fake investor in property. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll explain. You, you go ahead for a bit. Um, okay, cool. Well, look, let me explain. Um, especially a while ago. Not as much now, but it's still, still valid now. But having a, a white face at a business meeting gave your company some credibility yeah in other words it means that oh you've got foreigners involved that means you're more serious that means you're you're international you have international reach you know so a lot of companies they would just hire foreigners for a day or a, a couple of days to come sit at a business table and uh, i actually had a gig doing this a long 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 time ago where basically and i didn't know right i didn't know what i was getting myself into but I was offered a job to work for a construction company and they told me that I'd be going and doing some seminars. Okay, okay. And I thought, okay, this is cool, it's up my alley. But what it turned out was they were a big construction company and if you look at some of my older videos, you'll see I'm up in Inner Mongolia, Shanghai, Beijing. All the first times I went to these places, I was being flown around by this company. And what they did is they got me to prepare these PPTs. Well, they'd give me a PPT that asked me to like, just modify it a bit, add a couple of things. And then I would stand up in a boardroom in front of a bunch of government officials and go through the PPT and they said to me, don't speak any Chinese. Mm. They were implicit about this. They were like, you can only speak English. And I thought this is weird, but I thought, okay. So I stood up there and spoke English and went through the slide. And then I would have to go out and drink and do the whole horrible like drinking baijiu gumbei stuff and eating big feasts for sort of breakfast lunch and dinner and then you know the next day it would start all over again and basically what it was is it was a white monkey job the company paid me they paid for my travel they paid me like a i can't remember how much a couple of thousand rmb to do like the the few days and uh, i gave their company credibility because i found out later that they were basically saying that i was like an architect uh, engineer or something from overseas okay so you know there i am dressed in my suit giving a powerpoint presentation and uh, they've they've basically told all these government officials that i'm like a an architect guy down here yeah all right and uh you know that helped them land contracts so that's a very good example so, what other kind of uh, white monkey jobs are there? Well, We've touched I'll, on I'll, a few. I'll tell my story about what I did. Okay. Uh, when I actually I first moved back to Huizhou, I ended up getting a bunch of gigs where I would go to a school, like a little training center that would be Chinese run, maybe in a block of apartments, maybe it's a big kindergarten that's opening up, yeah. and go on stage at the grand opening and basically say that I'm going to be the teacher for that school, and I designed all the curriculum, right? 
when in fact the school doesn't have any foreign teachers because they don't have the licensing for that mm -hmm. and I'm basically just a white monkey dancing around on stage saying look at how professional I am I'm the foreign I'm running this school from you know the the American way of education you know I'm gonna be here when in fact I never saw the people again right, right. so I get paid to do that a bunch of times and I actually ended up I ended up getting so fed up with it. I mean, you got money, right? But it's sure. just, it's so fake and so artificial that yeah, it I makes would you throw feel in. Bad. Yeah, I would, because no one spoke English, I would go on stage and just throw in little, like, random phrases. I remember, like, one time I talked about Pizza Hut or something. Because, okay. like, they give you a script, and then I would just go off script and just make shit up because I, I just didn't, I didn't want to be there anymore. I ended up stop do it, stopping doing that because it just felt so fake. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people make their livelihood. We have a friend, right? Oh yeah, let me talk about him. Yeah. We have a friend and what he does, he's a musician. And uh, what he does is he goes to big openings of real estate developments and stuff. Or like if there's a car dealership or something and he will play music on their big opening night and they pay him well, they used to, they used to pay him. And in the beginning he was playing his own music, you know, him and a whole bunch of other people. And then after a while they were like, listen, we don't actually want you to play, we're going to put in a CD and we're going to play like a Celine Dion song or something and you're going to pretend to play and the singer's going to lip sync uh, you know, and basically he stopped being able to play real music and he had to pretend he was playing music and then they actually kind of got him out of the business because they were paying him too much and there are a lot of Russians and Eastern Europeans who were coming in here who would do the job cheaper and since they weren't actually doing anything that required talent, just standing there lip-syncing or whatever, they would just get, uh, you know, the cheapest available white foreigner to stand there and do the job. And I think that, that is the epitome of a white monkey job. Pretty much. Um, so yeah, that's that's his little story. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about the DJs. Yeah, um, actually I wanted, I wanted to bring up something that we've experienced in real life as well. Yeah. Was uh, when we did our episode, and here's a link, when we did it, oh, let's go down. Oh yeah, let's, this, let's just Ooh. go down on this rubble, but this is going to be loose, so you have to be careful. Okay. Just keep your back brake kind of locked. That's the, well, that's the way to do it. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Feather the front. No problems. Anyway, uh, yeah, come on down. Um, I was talking about, uh, when we d actually go to this link, um, we did this episode on piracy. And we went to a completely fake town, you know, a white monkey of a town, actually, a fake yep. Austrian village. And when we went inside the church, they had converted it into an art gallery, do you remember? Oh yeah, you're talking about good old Burke. <laughs> Burke. Probably, I'm hand on heart, probably one of the worst artists I've ever seen in my life. Worse than a kindergartner. Worse than a kindergartner. He's selling these for exorbitant amounts of money. And Thousands the reason, of RMB. Yeah, the reason is, is that the property developers don't have, in China, a real white artist, right? Sure. So this guy's like, yeah, I'm a real artist from Germany. Look at my artwork, and this is the best they can do. It's fake art. It's fake stuff. It's white monkey. Yeah, it was terrible. If you want to see that, you know, just go check out the episode. You can see what Burke's all about. <laughs> 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 Give him some love. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just going to also talk about how dangerous and misleading it can be because um, I haven't done this myself, but I know an old guy in Shenzhen who did a whole series of adverts pretending to be a doctor. Oh, no. And basically it was for some or other plastic surgery, something to do with breasts. And, uh, you know, because he's an old kind of serious looking guy, they dress him up in a lab coat. and. Yep. Uh, you know, made it look like he's all professional, sort of pocket protector and all that. <laughs> and then have him stand there and say some lines like, yes, this is European technology, blah, blah, blah. You know, and like looking at charts and stuff. And they're putting that on TV as, as a credible, like, foreign doctor advertising this probably really bad plastic surgery clinic. So, you know, as far as that's concerned, it's really, like, unscrupulous. Yeah, there was actually a famous story about a gynecologist that wasn't a real gynecologist that ended up getting a job to do gynecology work here in China. Oh, interesting. It's pretty bad stuff. Yeah, I wonder if he was a bit of a perv. I don't know, I think that's probably why he was interested in it, right? Yeah, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's grown. <laughs> Holy shit, that took me by surprise. I think that'd be nice to go at speed, but yeah, maybe another day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit hot, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to be scraping you off the, the pavement in or this heat. Or you. Eh, don't, don't need to worry about me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, that's that's pretty much, I guess, the be-all and the end-all of it, really. You know, a white monkey job is 
what I want to just once again say is completely illegal because it doesn't matter what job you're doing like I said 90% of foreigners do English teaching but the others are kind of working at their branch office you know of whatever company they they work at right I'll wait for you to go up first uh, and uh, you can only work for the company that gives you your work visa right yeah so if you're working for another company um, doing anything on the side, it's actually against the visa regulations. Right, so, so you can't take those jobs actually. No, no, you're not allowed to, but everybody does. You yeah. know, like like we've taken them before, lots of people we know do them actually as even full-time jobs sometimes. You know. Uh, anything else you want to add on the subject? Because I personally don't like it, I think it sucks. Um, and I, I just also have to say, yeah, a white monkey job, but that doesn't mean other foreigners aren't exempt. It doesn't really matter what your nationality or color of your skin is, you still can get a job as a foreigner doing something. Yep. But I think it's demeaning. I think it's kind of uh, dishonest. And it's it very... Sh it shows how, I don't know, fake a lot of the stuff is here. I'm not going to say the culture, but a lot of how business works is just completely artificial. And to be white is considered high class still. It's still a thing that people are, are seeking. So unfortunately, that market's still there. And it will be, I will say this, you want Sea Milk's future projections on white monkey jobs, they're all going to go to Eastern Europeans and Russians, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also going to say, on the record, that that white monkey job I did for that real estate company or construction company, I didn't knowingly get into it as a white monkey job, it just turned out to be one. If I knew that's what it was, I wouldn't have taken it. Of course, of course. But yeah, it did, in the beginning, get me around China a lot, which was nice. I got to see a lot. So, yeah. So... I think that's about it. You got anything you want to say to our subscribers? Whether you are a chimpanzee, a orangutan, or a human, <laughs> I really appreciate that you like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, and I'm just going to say, I, I don't think that there, there are many chimpanzees or whatever subscribed to our channel. <laughs> so <laughs> It's a failsafe. Yeah, all the, uh, all the lovely subscribers who are probably humans of various different creeds, colors, and races, we, uh, we do appreciate everything you do. And if you do not subscribe or like or comment, at least stay awesome. When I close my eyes, I can almost see it. Mm. When I take a breath, you fill up my lungs. Yeah. And if my mind